invest oh, it, be oh. an equal amount. I can't us. believe this is happening. You just said it was seven. So this is probably one of the worst pitches I've ever seen. You gotta make sure to watch it till the end because what happens there is just, ah, just, you gotta see it for yourself. What's up, Internet? I'm Daniel, the Pitch Professor. New week, new pitch to dissect. And uh, yeah, sometimes you got to look at the highs and sometimes you got to look at the lows of the pitching world. And uh, I found a title that sounds very promising. It's called Partnership on the Rocks After Shambles Pitch is Torn Apart by the Dragons. Yeah, that sounds really promising, and um, as always, I haven't seen it. I've, however, had a look at some of the comments below the original video, and they are spicy, to say the least. So um, let's see what we're getting ourselves into here. Ah, as ever, let's go. By the way, if you see things differently than I do, just post below. That would be amazing, because I'm just sharing my views on things. That doesn't mean they're right. Maybe, but maybe not. Anyhow, um, let's roll the pitch. Hello, Dragons. I'm Darren Markwick, Managing Director of Parcel Boxes Installed. I'm Liam Stamp. I'm Operations Manager. I'm Brian Wilcox, and I'm the inventor of these parcel boxes. We are here today seeking £40,000 for a 15% equity share in our startup company. Have you ever come home to find a parcel on your doorstep if it hasn't already been stolen, letting everyone know you're not at home? or you've had a parcel delivered to one of your neighbours and you need to go and retrieve it, wasting your valuable time. Very quickly, um, if it hasn't already been stolen, it lets your neighbours know you're at home. Without knowing too much about this, that's a very negative way of putting things. I understand, but it means like they're looking at a very rough neighbourhood potentially, which is not bad, but then again... It seems like they're saying all parcels everywhere in the world are stolen. So if you do that, you might want to narrow it down a bit. It just seems very negative. Um, speaking of such, just looking at this picture, the three of them, I don't know what it is, but there's something about them that they kind of don't look like a team for me. You know, there's some pictures you might want to go back where you see people walking out on stage. They bring energy with them. They look like a team. They look like they, they kind of fit. These three guys, they just look... Yeah, well, you know, I, 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 mm. but anyhow, m maybe I'm told, but that's just like the first impressions and they are important. Uh, a couple of days ago, I, 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 I hosted a huge pitching competition on stage, a thousand people. And you can tell that people who go on stage and they're in it to win it, that you can tell this guy, this girl, they are on fire. They, 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 they present something. And these guys, very, very different energy levels. Anyhow, um, let's continue the pitch. We have a pencil protected anti-theft parcel delivery box, which is courier agnostic and accepts multiple deliveries. If I can give you a quick demonstration. So any courier can turn the handle and open the drawer, place the parcel inside, close the drawer, and it automatically gets delivered to the secure compartment. And then with your key, you can retrieve it when you come home. With the parcel box, we genuinely believe we've created the future of mail, ensuring our customers, residential and commercial, never miss a parcel again. We'd like you to take a closer look at our products and we invite any questions. Many thanks. <sighs> I think they're using quite big words for what it is. This thing is career agnostic, uh, the future of mail I took down. I mean, yes. Uh, but but it's like it, they make it sound like more than it is. Um, and that's something a lot of people try and do. Essentially, it's I had a rental car yesterday and I gave it back. Um, and what you do is you have like one of these drawers. You pull open, you put the key inside, you put the drawer in like just a little door opens at the bottom. There's my hand goes up, plop, and the key's gone. That's not rocket science. It's still smart. It's still brilliant. But you don't have to say it's user agnostic uh, and the future of rentals. It's it's a, it's a box with an opening in the bottom. It can still be brilliant. That's not the thing, but don't try and oversell it. Just try and be authentic about what it is. Because if you say it's the future of mail, I'm expecting drone delivery. Um, if you say it's career agnostic, I'm assuming there's some kind of a very smart digital solution in the background. Um, just say it, it can be operated by anyone. All you need to do is like turn the lever. That, that's just as good. It's just overdoing it in a way. 
Um, but that's just my impression. And the thing is also, if they're saying it's the future of mail and secure and blah, 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 th that thing just looks like a... I mean, I have like a filing cabinet next to me. It looks like one of those. And um, I mean, I mean, not that I'm inviting anyone to do this, but without knowing much about this, I think it wouldn't take much to open it by force. You know, if you really want to get it, yeah. Well, mm. anyhow, um, yeah, the three of them just totally don't fit together. Have a quick look. Hoping for investment in their company that produces secure mailboxes for packages are Darren Markwick, <laughs> Liam Stamp and Brian Wilcox. So, so if I open that, yeah, it's in the handle. Open the drop. Put that box yes. in. That's it. It should drop in automatically. Yes. And it's concealed, so no one knows the parcel's in there. They want £40,000 in return for a 15% stake in their business. Look at those faces. This is faces. a freestanding unit. Yes. Yeah. So, so this one's standalone, this is built in, and this one's for apartments. But Peter Jones thinks it's all looking a little familiar. I've got something similar at my house, actually, that takes parcels, and it's got a key lock, and it was built into the brick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my personal view is that this is already a very limited market in terms of its size and the potential. Because a typical home has just got enough space to have a letterbox. It's not going to go and have a filing cabinet near its outdoor area, is it? Very quickly, to comment on that, Peter's absolutely right. And again, is that good or bad? Mm, here's the thing. Peter has discovered that it's not for everyone, but it's for a specific niche. Now, if you know that your product is more aimed at a niche, pitch it that way and it's not bad. If you say, however, the product is for everyone and then suddenly investors or whoever's listening suddenly go, yeah, but what about those? Mm, yeah, not for them. And those, mm, well, well, not for them either. And those, oh, um, yeah. That's about expectation management. You want to be specific on your expectation management and you don't want to go on the back foot. You don't want to get in the defensive because if people say, you said everyone, yeah, what about those? What about those? What about you automatically in the defensive? And then it gets interesting also how you handle it. So I'm curious to see how they handle it. Now this pitch is, I don't know what, maybe four or five years old, um, but it has a ton of views. That's why I thought it was really exciting. But the point being is, there are solutions like these. I'm based in Austria. There's a ton of these kind of solutions on the road now. They're digital products, they're standalone, and they're for anyone. The thing is, you just use a QR code and, and just open it. And it doesn't have to be your drawer. It could be anyone's, but it's yours for the moment. As soon as your thing is, uh, your parcel is, is, is left there, you get the, me the message, you go to that place, you unlock it, and you go. That's probably the smarter way. Um, but let's see. Um, let's see how the guys respond. What I also found interesting is, and I always so say this in every every single uh, uh, pitch: never pitch alone. Observe the reactions because the faces of the shark uh, of the dragons, sharks, is a different thing. Um, they said it all, and at the on the other side, seeing how the team was responding right now, you could see in their faces there's there's something something happening inside of them, and it's not inviting it's more defensive maybe even passive aggressive I, i'm unsure it's just a vibe i'm getting there tell me what you think about that it's pretty much for people that are lucky enough to have either brick walls or nice big houses isn't it i wouldn't have said that well, yeah, would you most, put that in the front garden well most houses have a front garden yeah, yeah but it looked like somebody's left their filing cabinet outside but let's look, look at the dude in the middle thing. <laughs> That, that's not really confidence inspiring. It seems a bit like pinky and brain, like, it's good. <laughs> I don't know. And, and this guy, I think he's Brian. He's very much on the defensive already. That's what people are doing, Peter. Really? We're thinking about getting them vinyl wrapped, Peter, so it could blend <laughs> in with the atmosphere. A vinyl wrap? Mm. People would have that in the garden. Yeah. It would look like a filing cabinet in your garden, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> But it's convenient, isn't it? And maybe in, now it may look like that, but it won't be long before they blend in. At the moment, you have two bins and a recycling bin in your front garden. It doesn't look aesthetically pretty, but it does the job. Yeah, it's just that the possibility of having this in most homes, it's not currently feasible. Yeah, that's going well. Now, what do we do there? Um, I mean, it's up to you how to handle it and give yourself a thought. But what's happening right now is Peter's looking for... No, I'll go here. I always keep mixing that up. Still a couple more videos to learn that. So he's, he's going basically he's challenging them 
And what they're doing is they're defending. And what's happening is the two of them are going mano a mano, as we say in Spanish. That means the two of them are going at each other to a certain degree. A bit like two dogs. One dog starts growling, the other growls back, and the two of them stand there kind of looking at each other, getting ready for a fight. It's important to stand your ground. It's also important to defend c certain things that may be misunderstood. Um, but it's the question how you do it. And the best way to defend is to produce information that underlines why your line of attack is correct. To say, we understand your viewpoint. However, research has shown that 79% of all people we, 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 we asked um, responded that they value safety overlooks or something like and that's just random bs i just answered but the point being is not saying well but i think but you think but i think but you think that leads to nowhere but responding with facts and it's something you have to be prepared for that these kind of questions come something else would be to say i understand that and it's it's, it's a very valid viewpoint however this is the first series um, and we're going to develop series two three and four um, where we're going to counteract this by. But just going against it, against it, against it is just going to lead to an escalation. I'm not commenting on the vinyl wrap. That's just random. I'm convinced of the aesthetic draw of these particular parcel boxes. Next up, Tej Lalvani, who wants to unwrap the company's share structure. So shall we start by figuring out how much you guys each own of the business? So I'm 79% shareholder. I have 1%. And I have 20%. Right, so just okay, 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 pricing, okay, 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 okay. Dead. Ah. So we've got 79, 1, and 20%. And this is... Ah, this is bad. Now, this is a big, big, big red flag, this hand. Why? Up to now, I think Brian, as his name, has been doing the talking. He seems like the brain behind. Um, the gentleman in the middle has done a bit of talking, and the guy on the right, he well, he had the idea with the vinyl wrap. Okay, good. He says he has 79% equity, the other one 1%, and the next guy 20%. That seems very, very, very uneven. Now, if the 79% guy would be doing all the talking and saying, look, I'm the CEO, I'm the inventor, I've been doing this, and if you recently onboarded Mr. Guy in the middle. Mm. But this, this screams, this screams at some kind of a weird, unfair deal behind. Um, and as an investor, that's stuff you look out for because Mr. 1%, he's going to be diluted really quickly. What does that mean, dilute? It means if you invest into them, um, he's going to get less and less and less. That means after one or two rounds, he's got basically nothing. That means he has long term, he has no motivation to stay on board at all. 20%, okay, 79%, yes, of course. But that's what you don't want. And, I, and, I, and I've seen it myself. Now, they haven't said yet if they have any external investments. But we also say, like, if you get external investments, you want to make sure that the founders have a significant share after the first round and that they kind of also have shares to be happy over multiple other rounds that might follow investment rounds and here um and it seems very unevenly distributed let's see how tej lavani is going to respond to that how much is the one which is installed in the bricks at the moment oh he's not going down 199 so how much does it cost you the cost to us is 70 usd 70 is about 55 pounds right, about yeah. that you said you're a startup, yeah. but you have some sales, presumably. So yeah. what have you done so, so far? So um, we've actually been selling for about 10 months, um, of which our turnover is 21K. And in that time, we've supplied 68 boxes and we've provided 37 installations of the box. Can I just say something? Let's say, so as, up to now, we've been two separate companies. Darren's company has sold 68 units, but my company has sold about 500 in UK and Europe and another 500 in Japan. And then we're merging the companies together. So right, so what, what sort of business is your... Yeah. Mm, big red flag again. This is bad. Um, because, because if you hear that in a pitch environment, 
you're like, so, so what does that mean? What am, what am I buying right now? What does it mean amongst each other? Who has shares? Um, have you done the merger yet? Why do you need to tell me about this? Why aren't you pitching this as a complete company? Why 68 versus 500? All of this is like super confusing. And that's something you don't want to have in a pitch because as a pitch, you are trying to create an ideal business proposal saying, look, we have the perfect team, we have the perfect product, we have the perfect timing, and we have the perfect market, go to market. You want to make it look good. Not, you don't want to overdo it, but when you, you, you want to say now is the right time versus saying, look, we've just recently merged and here's a weird structure and well, sales are like this, but kind of like that. And you got to, that's the moment where you go like, okay, but if you are, proud to present this while being on a TV show and you think this is okay to present this what else have you got that I think might be weird that I might find if I kind of dig a little deeper that's very but this is you don't want to do it. it's not about hiding things I'm not saying you're not supposed to do that but why would you go on a TV show if you're in that process it's it's wrong timing and timing is so essential from a business point of view I mean If I were to listen to this, I go, no, 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 done, done. No, 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 I don't want to hear that. I, I don't want to. Why are you presenting it in this form? That's just very, very, very bad. Um, What company are you doing at the moment? My company's been more, more in the inventive side of it. And then Darren and Liam have been the salespeople. One more thing. Just observe the way he's talking. His voice seems a little all over the place. He seems a little insecure. He's rattled. He's already rattled the way he's talking. It means he knows something's been touched where he's not comfortable with. And again, this is something, if you're happy with it, cool, no problem. If you notice that the person you're challenging feels rattled and is unsure about it, you know, you've just touched a soft spot. And again, a startup is a high-risk environment where a lot of stuff can go wrong. And if early on you already discover that this is, not going to withhold the slightest, slightest bit of pressure, how should this with, withhold a high-pressure, high-growth, high-stake environment? And it can't. It won't. The guy in the right, by the way, in the blue, he's just standing there, you know, like one of these nightclub bouncers where you just think he's going to go, all okay, close sunshine, and then he's going to go and punch someone. It's just, look, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's just weird from body language point of view. Right, so the investment today would be in the combined company? Yes, yes, combined, yes. Combined. yes. And the IP will be held in that company yes, as well? Yes, yeah. that's correct. So when I asked you how much have you sold, you only said 68. Why do you so know? in the, our UK-based operations, uh, under parcel boxes installed, we have sold 68. However, because obviously we've only been actually selling them for 10 months, Brian was the inventor who obviously preceded that, and his figures go back a bit further. With two sets of figures to marry up, Tej Alvani is having to work hard to get a clear He's picture yawning. of the sales. Now, it's to Kasuliman's turn to attempt to get a better understanding of the combined businesses. You've come here wanting 40 grand. It's a total startup, which I can understand, but you've made the thing very complicated. Mm. Based on our projections, um, so... so uh, okay, projections, let's sure. start. Yeah, sure. Um, Year one. So um, we project a turnover of 63K. 63K? Yeah. Turnover? Yeah. This is purely parcel box figures, by the way. Brian's figures are separate. I'm talking about going forward as a, the new collective business. Yeah. You've just sold me 63 grand. Yeah, yeah. So again, that going includes in... Brian's, that includes yours. Yeah, that, everything. That's, just, that's just our figures. No, Brian's got his separately. Well, yeah. Oh, oh boy. Guys, guys, you've come in with three of you. You should have said, we're going to go in as one. Yeah. And I've just asked for some figures for the next 12 months. Sure. And I'm assuming that the partnership or the amalgamation has happened? It hasn't yet, no. Oh, it hasn't? It hasn't happened. The, the merger hasn't happened. Okay, so year two, which is the magic year. Yeah. So give me the magic figure. Uh, the turnover, 383. Just, 383. I mean, the guy going like, <laughs> I mean, you're going like, <laughs> but that means like, dude, like, yeah, we know. <sighs> we, we. It's like he's going like random numbers. It's just so... It's just, it's, it, it's a shit show. It's an absolute, utter shit show. And, I mean, going like, 
well, the numbers are Brian's doing this and this and, and the neighbor, by the way. And there's a monkey who also kind of sold three, we think. And if you divide by two, minus five equals seven means an April will have a turnover of half of three of two. And you're like, uh, you don't want to do that. You don't. You want to be very precise. You know, turnover, 50K, 100K, 150K. Not just like this. It's just, it's just, it's a total shit show. It's... <sighs> this is not taking into account Brian's figures. Go, no, Brian. I'm, 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 but you've come in here, all due respect, to say it includes two businesses in one. So, okay, what would the combined figures be? <laughs> like for, for last year, it was, it was £150,000 I right. turned over. Okay. Um, so if I double it for next year, it will be 300000 Sorry, I'm sorry, I am having... I've got to stop, this is a shambles. Uh -huh. Are you seriously expecting us to sit here and add all of your numbers together so we can work out for you whether or not you've got a business that might possibly work joined? I have never seen a presentation like this in the den. Have you actually spoken to each other before you walk through those doors? We did, yes. yes. Did you think about making a presentation that actually presented the business that we were going to invest in instead of expecting me to sit here and say, right, what's your bit of the business? Which year? What's the bit that you're talking? Let's add that together and let's see what's yeah. going forward. Yeah, no, I respect that. Oh, well, I'm, no, I I'm not asking that. you to respect it. Because I've got to tell you, this is shambolic. I'm sorry about that, but we are at the moment we're two separate companies. And but you're not asking me to invest in two separate companies. You can't stand in here and say we're combining the business, but actually we're going to give you the two separate numbers. You're confused. I mean, you're completely confuddled. <laughs> I like her very nice way of ranting. That's great, but she's so right. Imagine you go to some cake shop and say, I'd like to have a chocolate cake. And they go like, sure, good sir. Here's an egg. Here's some flour, uh, and Joe over there, if you go around the corner, you can buy some chocolate. And you're like, dude, I want a chocolate. Yeah, we, 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 it says outside, but you know, well, we're three companies. Th that's what they're doing. And, 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 and I understand Deborah so well because they're there to make a business proposal, not like here's the ingredients and potentially, and that's weak. And what's even worse is that these three guys must have, signed up for this TV show, gone through castings. It's not like you go there and say, okay, I'm there. And they go like, oh, great, we're going to start filming today. They're probably going to say, without knowing how it works in the UK, but saying, look, okay, good, the, the date for the filming is going to be in three month time and this is what we need and yada, yada. So you get ample time to prepare and that they take this time and then they go, then go like, this is going to be a very good business proposal. Without understanding, they will be ripped to shreds and then without understanding that if that happens on a TV show, this is going to haunt you for a long, long time. People are always going to say, hey, you're that guy, right? And that's just so bad. Any questions for you whatsoever? I could not possibly invest and spend my time trying to work out the confusion that you yourselves haven't bothered working out mm. the other side of those lift doors. And that's what it I means. I won't be investing. They I'm haven't out. bothered. And it's about valuing the time. Deborah Meaden is unequivocal in her disdain of the entrepreneur's pitch and perhaps not surprisingly becomes the first dragon out. Will Peter Jones be any more forgiving? Of course not. Well, that's put a very interesting atmosphere in the den. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually couldn't agree more. Mm. It's embarrassing, isn't it? We, mm. we, we've been a bit naive. This is an embarrassing moment for you, we, but we it's... We quickly add mm. the numbers up, surely. I think it's best that we just leave it there. I mean, this guy, this guy, he just doesn't get it. Right, and he just seems so out of place, and he seems like <sighs> there's there's just something about him uh, that just doesn't add up, and, and and without knowing a thing, without knowing a thing, it just seems like they kind of. I mean, I mean, the top comment someone posted on the there it was sounds like a group project with one guy doing all the work while the other two pretend they are, and that's 
the comment that got me kind of interested in this, and it seems exactly like this guy, like this. And this guy seems like, you know, these guys selling insurances and selling it to old grannies and whatnot. That's, I'm not saying he does that. I'm just saying people who have a body language similar to him have a tendency of sometimes doing that kind of stuff. Don't sue me, dude. But the point being is it just doesn't add up from the way they're behaving and their demeanor. And they're just, they're not a team. They're not a group. And uh, it's just, and he just still doesn't get it. And he's still, mm, he should just be, yeah, just shut up. Um, I'm out. Imagine one of them would invest. The bit I don't understand in putting two businesses together is how you then ended up with 79% to you, Darren, and 20% to Good you, one. Brian. Mm -hmm. But Brian, you've got the track record of a business that has sold yeah. 500 units in Europe, 500 units in Japan or yeah. something. Yes. And you guys are just resellers, but you end up with 20% of the business and you, Darren, end up with 79. I, it doesn't make sense. It would be an, um, an equal amount between us. If you invest... Oh, after well, the like, merger. Yeah, well, after the merger, if you invest, oh, it would oh. be an equal amount I between us. I can't believe this is happening. You just said it was... Seven. What does that mean? It means dude on the right, whom I just kind of... I didn't accuse, but I just... means, okay, when we get cash, I get most of the cash, and I give the other guys my equity back, and I'm taking the cash. And this is what he just said. He just said it like that, and... I mean, I mean, you get investment to build... To, to, to make stuff work, you don't cash out on like an angel investment like that. And it just sounds that way. You're going to go, okay, from the, from the 40 quid, 40, 40K, I get, I get like 80 and blah, 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 blah. And, I'll, and then I'm, I'm, I'm out. That's the way it sounds. It sounds, I mean, just look at, look at the reaction of the dragons. It's just, it's outrageous the way he's putting it. And he's just putting it like it's, like it's the most normal business practice. It's, it's appalling. 79, 20. And one. That's what it is at the moment. To be honest, I think the proposition is a disaster, let alone the investment that you've tried to present. I could ask you a trillion questions, but it'll all lead to the same thing, which means I'm out. Thank you. Confusion reigns in the den as Jenny Campbell's probing reveals discrepancies over the company's share structure. <laughs> Nicely put. With three dragons now out of the picture, Deborah's has Chase Lalvani got any chance of getting this pitch out of the doldrums? How can you not have this organised? This doesn't make sense. You guys haven't got a proper business. You don't know what the shareholdings are. You don't know what the sales are. And I can't be part of something like this, so I'm going to say I'm out. Look at his view. Look, I mean, I mean, that view is like, guys, I told you. Or, guys, that was your job. There's something, something happening there, which is... Oh, and that's happening while being filmed. That's so bad. And, and he's still like, mm, whatever. I know where your car is. How do you feel? Got it. Could have went better. Look, guys, I'm going to be very straight with you. There is a problem. Unfortunately, you're not going to sort it out. For that reason, I'm not going to invest and I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah, oh, look at them all, so the way they're leaving. But the fault lines in their pitch soon began to appear. Oh well, that's life. I'm Just the way they're also standing, the two of them are facing the camera and the other guy faces them and he's still got this, this bouncer body language. It's weird. Absolutely speechless. It is shocking. You won't be doing a celebratory dance in here. And it's created a seismic split in their new partnership. As Deborah said, it's a shambles and, you know, I can't disagree with her based on what I've just experienced. I won't be merging with these two guys now, most definitely. And Brian's walking home. Yeah, we're fine. Did you just hear that? He says, look, based on this, I'm not, I'm not going to do business with them. And, and Bouncer dude says, yeah, and you're walking home. Wow, that's... Uh... So he's basically saying, I, I, I don't even have the courtesy to drive you home. You're home, good luck. We'll never talk with you again, but we know where you live. That's awkward. So, wow, that's that's a bad one. But I think there's a lot of learnings in there. And that means, like, if you pitch, do your homework. It's that simple. And understand all the downsides of your company will be found sooner or later. Understand that. Don't try and hide things. Make them work. And only then, when you have your A game up, 
go and pitch. That doesn't mean that if you are in a pre-seed phase or in the seed phase that people say, what's your revenue in 10 years? And say, look, I'm not 100% sure. Of course you're not. But you need to have these kind of things like structures in mind. You need to know if you're going to merge, merge before. And specifically, for people observing a pitch, it's about the team dynamics. Go in there when you like yourselves, not when you're already about to punch each other in the face because how on earth are you supposed to build a company when it takes so little that after a couple of minutes of being put under pressure, your team falls apart. That's, that's bad. So in that sense, um, <laughs> that was from, from the highs of the high the last couple of weeks, that was a low. Um, but I believe there's a lot to be learned from it in that sense. Thank you very much for watching. And um, if you're still listening in, hey, just go hit that like button. That would be amazing. Thank you very much. Take care, stay safe, and see you next time. Bye-bye.